Okay, on today's video, I'm going to talk about, again, um, B2B or business to business PPC campaigns. Uh, on Google specifically is what I'm talking about here. Of course, this would also apply to Bing somewhat. Same strategies I'm going to share with you. And if you're not doing Bing yet, and you're doing Google's uh, search, you have, and especially in the B2B space, you have to be doing Bing. But in general, B2C too. Um, better return, lower cost per traffic, and higher conversion rates. Upwards of, you know, double the ROI than Google can provide just to the, you know, the reduction in cost per click and increase in conversion rates on Bing versus Google. Because less volume, 10 to 20% of the volume is Google, but double the return because not many people know about it. So anyway, uh, besides all that, however, got off track for just a minute, I'm going to talk about how much the lead cost has went up for a lot of people that run B2B campaigns, camp that you know, and campaigns that work perfectly fine, and up until about last year, about mid 2020, and things just fell apart. I'm going to explain why that is, why they what, why the lead cost has went up so much, without you know, and it's not the cost per click or cost for the traffic as it has went up that much. It's the quality of the traffic as per the you know normal Joe Schmo who's setting up their campaign. It's not set up the way that it was. They had it set up before and that even worked before. It just simply isn't good enough now. But I'm going to explain how you're going to fix all that on this video here today. Uh, why the lead cost went up a ton in 20 to 21, 2022, 23 also I'm sure apply. Since this is not going to go away anytime soon. You should also stay tuned as well. And here, here's why and actually what you can do for sure to fix it. And the good news is, is if you're the one that does this and nobody else picks up on this, you're going to then rise to the top. The cream always rises to the top, as they always say. So anyway, as I usually do on my videos here, I have a short list of things to cover that explains the do's and don'ts of this particular strategy I'm going to discuss, what it can do for you, what it can't do for you, examples of how much increase in results you're going to be able to get from it, all that stuff. So anyway, the first thing, why the lead cost has went through the roof? Since 2020 to 2021, it is the changes to the match types which is the big, big difference due to an update. Now, a lot of people know about match types, you know, that, and as, as I have personally described match types on Google, how it has changed recently, there is no exact match anymore, truly. Exact match is the new phrase match. Phrase match is the new modified broad match, which if you don't know what that is, it just allows you to have this, the, the words in any order, but you have to have those words. And modified broad match, there is none anymore. And of course, broad is there, but it's totally broad now, like to the point where basically that never works. It never did before. I never used regular broad before, but really it never works now. But anyway, I'm not, this isn't a video just to tell you that. So hold on. This has everything to do why the lead cost has went up for most people without even touching their campaigns and without seeing cost per click going up. I'm going to tell you how to deal with this issue because if you don't know, or a lot of people already do know, I should say, not, not you know, it's not, but I wouldn't say it's a majority of people know this, but in B2B P2C, PPC, a lot of people argue, um, you know, sometimes with me, I've had conversations in the past, oh, Corey, B2B PPC doesn't work. Uh, yes, it does. It's just a lot harder to be able, it takes a, a much more refined strategy. It always has. And now it just takes an even more refined strategy. The opportunity this, then of course um, is if you're the one who figures this stuff out, you're the only one that can, you know, basically you get to hog up all the goodies in your market on Google search. So anyway, how does the actual, you know, match types affect your lead cost going up? So Instead of, so let's say your keyword that you're targeting is on a B2B campaign, I'll just step, take a step back. Normally, what you could do and what you had to do in the past if you're offering a B2B service, um, especially, but also B2B product, you'd have to type it and classify the keywords that you have and drill down to actual what are called 
you know, buying phrases. So Trans-Pacific Shipping Consultant, not Trans-Pacific Shipping, uh, and, and then no word after it. And this is not a real great example. So a little, in the B2B space, we want to say, um, let's just try to give you an, another example here. Uh, cost, um, cost reduction strategies, cost reduction strategies consultant. So again, that's not, I'm trying to think of a better example off the top of my head, but basically you got to, what you had to have in the past, sorry, I didn't think this out a little bit better, but the keywords had to have a buying term for a service. You have to have the word or had to have a word, the word consultant, service, company, companies, agencies, firms, firms, that kind of word on it in order to drill down enough to find the buyer in your niche that's actually looking for a service that in that that's what they can get from you what you could do is you could run each of your keywords in exact match you know with your brackets around it and that would get you just the the you know the, the cream out of all the clicks you know um so there there's in our space, PPC management. Now, somebody typing in PPC management, maybe they want a firm. A lot of people will, but it's not, it wasn't now and it wasn't before even not enough to bid on that term and have it work real well. Where the juicy meat was, was PPC management company, PPC management firm. That last word was very, very important. So that's what I mean by buying term. And so you'd run those in exact match. Yes, the cost per click is a little higher, but the conversion rate was solid and the ROI was there. Now, when you are bidding on a term like Trans-Pacific Shipping Consultant, if you do shipping type consulting, freight consulting, uh, you get instead Trans-Pacific Shipping. And even if you're running this with your brackets, remember I said at the start of this video, um, ex there is no exact match anymore. You could put brackets around what you have, but it doesn't actually drill down to to where you would, if you need to have the word consultant in your term, you just can't get it anymore with that. There's a way around it. I'm going to explain how or why. But instead of Trans-Pacific Shipping Consultant with the in, an exact match, i.e. with brackets around it, you would still get Trans, now you get Trans-Pacific Shipping or Trans-Pacific Shipping Cost, which is a little bit better, but still, for something like that, I can tell you for sure, if you can't get this drilled down to people actually looking for consultant, and you have to go after the people, the more ambiguous terms where maybe they're looking for a consultant, maybe they're looking for, you know, general definition or who knows. That for the price Google charges for even the ambiguous terms, which is not that much less than the terms that are really productive and have the buying term attached to it, they're not typically worth it. And that's why now and before people always complained that B2B PPC didn't work if they did not know this one key detail about what you need to do. So anyway, with that, bigger money now means the people, would, in other words, with the, the big money are the ones that are going to win this game moving forward because what you can do is you can mitigate this whole issue that I just described to you here with exact... Uh, uh, negative exact match negative keywords or negative keywords with an exact match format which you need literally hundreds if not thousands of them before people would use lots and lots of negative keywords so they could run a more sloppy campaign and then just weed out the inefficient stuff whereas I would take the opposite approach I would just do the deep deep keyword mining to find all the keywords people are typing in to actually look for a consultant or a service or a company that does the service and only bid on them an exact match and it would just be gravy right off the top right away when we launched the campaign and so whereas somebody else would type in trans-pacific shipping put maybe f quotes around it for the most part, it wouldn't run very good. It would bring in, if you look at the search terms report, which tells you what people physically typed in before they clicked on their ads, not what you were supposed to have typed in, that they would find some irrelevant junk in there and they would start adding negative keywords. And that would be because initially they wouldn't spend enough time to do what I do, which is to have a keyword for every ad group, which will let you have an ad for every ad group, and then have a few hundred keywords 
and you could target each one in an exact match instead of 20 keywords in this phrase match, which you know is going to get people you know words that are going to be able to be added on the front and the back of the word instead of the literal term by itself, and uh, one ad for everything and a basic campaign setup that can be done in 20 minutes versus one that needs to be done in 20 hours and just to get started. So they had the negative keywords. Well, now even my strategy won't work here anymore, and so. Where the big money comes in is you will still do exactly what I told you. You're going to run everything just the way that I described it before. You're going to do the deep keyword mining, find all the actual buying terms. If you sell a product, you, you, it definitely can be, you know, for sale or, you know, um, you know, bulk. Uh, you know, if if you want to try to differentiate B to B versus B to C in your space, that's kind of like that. Um, that, that kind of thing. Those would be examples of buying keywords in, in the product space. If you aren't making money with not doing that, that's what I suggest you do. But So you would do that and you would drill down. So and my philosophy always is, as I've mentioned on these videos, start more restrictive than you think. Do more drilling down than you think. If that makes money, you can start to broaden it up. But if you go too broad, too quick, <laughs> Your whole budget's gone in two seconds. You're going to be, you know, broke and disgruntled, and just swear off the whole thing that 90% of people do that try out Google Ads. So anyway, you drill it down, run it in an exact match, and then you still have to spend some money now. There's no way getting around it to find out the the phrases that you should add as negative keywords. Now there is a hack to this to get out ahead of this a little bit more with your keyword research. If you could find so you'll, maybe your, your bread and butter here of the terms you want to actually bid on that have the buying word attached to it, there's only 50 terms. But through your research, you found another 2,000 that seems to be searches that people search for that don't have the buying term in it. What you're going to do is you're going to put that in what is called a negative keyword list. And you're going to have each of those other keywords you don't want in a negative, uh, an exact match format in your negative keyword list. So you basically are siloing things out and saying automatically, here's all the keywords, here's the ones I want to have my ad trigger for. If it doesn't, if they search for the rest of these, automatically block it out versus trying to run just these keywords and then having to eventually add the search phrases you get to show up in your search uh, terms report and adding them one at a time, which will take money to spend first to find out your search terms and then add those. That would be a lazy approach and you're going to spend more, but it would get the same objective done. If you do your, you know, keyword mining and get your 3,000, you know, of the terms that look like they're searched, you right away add the other terms that you think will be searched as negatives that you don't want right away. That'll cut down most of the spend that you have to spend to be able to find out how to add enough negative keywords that you need to be able to get you back down again to just the buying terms, as I mentioned before, where the gravy actually sits. So that is what I would recommend if you're just starting out. If you already have a campaign running, simply, and you've been running it since you know mid-2020, you probably have a few thousand searches that you've already paid for and that were wasteful, so you can go into the search terms report pick out anything that are not buying terms, add that in your negative you know, keyword list, and apply that to all the keywords in your, your, sorry, campaigns in your account universally, and then you will start to only then have your ads and keywords trigger for these buying terms. And even if you're not targeting the buying terms right now, I would leave it because those campaigns and keywords have history behind it. And um, you could set up a new campaign that just targets these buyer keywords to get run it side by side with your current campaigns. But I would certainly only do that because no matter how inefficient these campaigns are, you'll be better off due to the history behind them, especially if, if you've had conversion tracking hooked up for the ad algorithm to learn how these ads are run to add your negative keywords to the old campaigns because that's pretty much right away going to start working for you. And then you could take things up another notch by having a new campaign that's set, that's set up the way that it was supposed to be in the first first place that just drill down to the buying terms in your space uh, for your B2B category that you're in and add the same negative terms. You'll still have to add, a get, like I said before, you can't just add these as an exact match, the buying keywords an exact match. 
you'll still get other stuff. So you'll have to apply that same negative keyword list you had to create anyway for your existing campaigns to clean those up and just start to have your edge trigger for buying terms, not everything else. Then you can apply that to your new campaign, which then just targets your buyer terms, which will get you at ultimately a little higher, well, a lot higher percentage yet of just buyer terms that come through. You need to have like half of the searches that you have show up be the buyer terms for the most part in most niches to make a 10 to 1 return or higher on your ad spend. Otherwise, in the less you get, the less your ad, your return is going to be, simply put. So that it kind of explains the siloing strategy you got to use now. The th uh, third thing here I want to mention is the bidding. So one of the things that people will make a mistake on too is is their, let's say their, their campaigns are, are limited by budget so they'll reduce the bids or they want to pay as much per click and they see their campaigns are still getting enough clicks and spending your budget, all things are good, right? Eh, no. If you don't bid enough, Google is going to start to send you all the crap traffic that's not a buying term, in other words. So you have to figure out, you basically have to spend enough to where all your keywords are eligible and You'll have to monitor your search term report to make sure you're seeing at least 50% or more buying terms come through. And if you're not, after adding all your negative keywords, bid more, then you're going to show up if there's a bottleneck in terms of not bidding enough for that 10% of the market where you actually want to scrape off the top that has the buying words in it, you actually make sure that you show Google you're serious, you want those terms, and then with your negative terms, you block out the rest of the stuff. So then you're actually, and if so, in other words, if you don't bid it high enough, you'll never make what I described to you work. So that's a, that's a thing you want to do. Obviously, you don't want to bid too much. There's a limit if you spend $200 a click. Some spaces like uh, um, the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, yeah, the phone systems, business phone systems. There's $100 per click, no problem. Same thing with uh, flood damage, water damage repair. Uh, to some degree as well, uh, but that is a B2B, I guess. Anyway, if you bid too much, you're going to overpay, and you're, you're, it's going to be it's basically what it is. It's like overkill. You'll be plastered at the top. It's always been in the past. If you did not know, being number one isn't even the most ideal position. You want to be like three or four because people who aren't paying attention click on the first ad more than, and the people that are paying attention paying attention more that you need an engaged person to, to, to buy, or click on three to four more often. So you just want to be there so you're consistently not showing a not on first page bid warning on your keyword. So under your keywords menu, have your keywords, have everything show up black and not in red saying bid too low, not on first page, you raise it. You may at least have that, but then at the same time, you have to keep raising it so that, again, with the negative keywords, you're showing that your buying terms are over half the percentage of all the search terms that you ultimately see you're paying for that people are searches that they're making and then ultimately clicking on one of your ads. So hopefully that was, concept was clear enough. Um, the, uh, let's see, what did I say here? So the fact that this all goes on means if you have a half strategy, in B2B PPC always was hard, but if you only have a half effort with what you're doing, it gets to be real expensive in a real hurry now. Even if you run your keywords in exact match, 90% of your searches is not gonna be buying searches. So you're literally, you're paying, you know, $10,000 a month to get $1,000 worth of eligible business. And then of course, if your rest of your funnel, your landing page isn't, very efficient, then it gets to be even harder to even make money. So don't start out shooting yourself in the foot twice here. Start out with an efficient funnel so that, you know, because you're still only probably going to get 50, 60, 70, 80% of your searches being buying terms, even when you've done everything I've told you here. You, and then you still need the rest of the funnel to be optimized. If you don't have a good landing page made by a landing page expert, get one done. Set up the campaigns in exact match format. Do it one ad per keyword, per you know per ad group model. Just bid on your buying terms. Add your negative keywords. Make sure you're bidding enough that you know you've optimized the height, you know the number of buying terms that show up in your search terms report as you can 
and then not bid any higher, you could go up bids 20% at a time until you find this sweet spot where it's not too much, but not too little as I described here. And uh, you'll basically win every time. If you go, uh, I wanna say if you, don't, if you don't win this, you can you know, just come back and smack me and, and say, hey, it didn't work, Corey, because 99% of this time, the time, nobody else is doing this. So if you just go ahead and do it, you will get the results in your space. You'll hog up 80% of the eligible business, the profitable business able to get in your space. 90% of people, like, like I said before, that try out ads in your space will never make money or make just a tiny bit. The people who win go in it with the approach of, I'm not just gonna do whatever here. I'm gonna, like my life depends on it, I'm gonna do everything I can to make this work. So, we're gonna start out, we're gonna track our results, and we're gonna keep optimizing and optimizing and optimizing and optimizing and optimizing until we win this game. Go in with that approach, you're gonna win. If you go, oh, what difference does it make? I don't, oh, who cares? You're gonna be the one of the 90% who lose. And I'm not speaking from arrogance here. I've seen hundreds of people run their accounts. I know the difference between good accounts, bad accounts, and I know how many actually win. So take it for what you will. Apart from that, last thing. So, and just as a general disclaimer here, I put B2B uh, PPC on Google still actually can work despite what people are saying now, despite what your thoughts are about it. Don't get discouraged. Don't go on with a negative attitude. Obviously, if it's, you have a negative attitude, it's hard to justify all this. Either get to talk to me about it or, you know, come back to it later and, and tackle it the way that I said you need to tackle it and you can make this work and you will win. Ultimately, once you've done all this, the typical actual raise in the conversion rate and the ROI from your campaign not adding this negative keyword strategy to your account with the same exact funnel. At the very least, I talked about, um, you know, you'll, most people with, without the negative keywords are only going to be getting 10% of the searches to be the right searches. Whereas if you do all this, you're going to get, your goal is to get 50% or more. With that said, um, your conversion rates just right along with that are going to go from like 1% who fill out the form or call on your page to like 5%. Or if you want to look at it as you're going to go from a 200% ROI to a thousand percent just by doing this stuff. So it has, and that's a, an average over several B2B PPC counts that I run right now. And we had to go through this with completely as well each and every time to make it work. So you can't really avoid this. If you're serious about making it work, if you're realistic about making it work, this is, ultimately what you're stuck with, like it or not, or just settle for, you know, mediocre results, whatever, that's up to you. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that helps. Hope that inspired you to go ahead and do this stuff for yourself. It'll really pay off. If you like this video, I have a lot of other videos on this channel just like this about different PP money making PPC strategies that I have and that we use to guarantee results for our clients, literally speaking. Uh, I have a, a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog where I break down step by step how to build PPC B2B campaigns and, and other similar campaigns, again, to guarantee results for our client and uh, clients. And uh, you can use those as well for your own uh, it, you know, business and for your, to your own advantage. Um, apart from that, if you have any questions about B2B PPC or anything you think that I should have covered that I didn't, leave a comment down below. I get back to everybody who leaves me a comment in the comment section here. I hope you enjoyed the video and inspired you to go out there and do something with your campaigns or just get up back on the horse and try it again where it's not really working for you right now.